Science paper number one, exploring the Unum, the building blocks of the multiverse. Science paper number one, exploring the Unum, the building blocks of the multiverse. One, ENS, extension neurosensing, a new, advanced form of remote viewing. For thousands of years, mankind has been wondering about the universe and what is up there or out there. Just like us, our ancient ancestors did the same thing. They looked at the sun, the moon, the stars and the vast space, wondering what is the purpose? In fact, the ancients probably knew more about this than the average person does today, which will be obvious to the reader after finishing this series of papers, but they still didn't know exactly how the universe is constructed, how it started, except through myth, and what it would look like if we had the chance to view it from outside itself, through an avatar. The breathtaking truth is that now we can do this, thanks to extension neurosensing ENS number, which is an advanced form of remote viewing RV number. RV is nothing new, it has been used by the military and the government for decades. Even private persons are using it. The most well-known people in this field were members of the Church of Scientology, such as Ingo Swan, 1, Harold Puthoff, 2, and Ed Thames, 3, who most likely was a Scientologist as well. I was myself a member of the church in the late 1980s, 4, so I am a witness to that RV was used within Scientology with various success, although it wasn't officially called remote viewing, it was called exteriorization. The military took the technology used in the church and brought it to yet another level. However, aside from all that research, Life Physics Group in California, 5, LPGC number, independently and without claiming any connection with any military, religion, or government bodies, has given a whole new meaning to RV. From have been practicing this new science, they have mapped the universe in a way that has never been done before, down to the lowest subquantum levels, through the dimensions, and are now even aware of what exists outside the four-dimensional space-time. I find this extremely fascinating, because previously, some of this information has only been available through metaphysical entities, channeled by, or otherwise connected with, human instruments vehicles bodies. Now, pioneers in modern science have discovered the same thing and expanded upon it to give us a more holistic picture of the multiverse and its different levels of manifestation, LOM's number. In the first paragraph, I am using the term outside for simplicity, although there is no inside or outside. In fact, the scientists at LPGC have scientifically managed to prove that everything in the multiverse, which is an infinite number of serial and parallel realities, originating in thoughts, is connected, and thus we can be, and are, in different places at the same time, while still staying put in what we perceive as our current bodies, our home station, if you will. Basically, we are living different lives, independent of each other, simultaneously, in different time periods, on Earth, and even on other, different planets. Their research has also shown that we are capable of making a replica of our RNA DNA setup and teleport it to another place in time while at the same time remaining where we started, e.g. in our home. This, as I will show later, will be extremely helpful in the not-so-far future when we start traveling over the universe. Figure 1, Dr. Luke Montagnier. Sounds like science fiction? It sure does, but not only has LPGC number known about this for years. Just recently, on January 31, 2011, Tech World posted an article about Nobel Prize nominee, Dr. Luke Montagnier, who says that he and his team of scientists have discovered how to successfully teleport DNA from one place to another. Not only did it transport, but also made a replica of itself, so that the same DNA mock-up existed simultaneously in two places. 6. This is a major breakthrough for human science, and the discovery also verifies what I have been told, that many alien races use this technique to travel through space and time, something we will discuss in a later paper. We live in extraordinary times. So much is happening so quickly. Not only have we advanced technologically, but also on personal, spiritual levels, we are quickly becoming more aware as human beings. Science and spirit are beginning to merge for the first time in eons. In the minds of men, they have been two separate things. But now, more and more people start to realize that everything is connected on a subquantum, subatomic level. I am you, you are me, Earth is us and so is the entire universe. We are all one. Not until science acknowledges the spirit and the two are integrated to the extent that it becomes common knowledge can we really take a quantum leap into the future. This sounds like an impossible goal, but it is achievable. In a nutshell, ENS number works as follows, without going into the complex scientific jargons around it. A human being, applying this technique, lies relaxed in a resonance-inducing sarcophagus, while his vital energy thresholds are monitored. A photonic body, an avatar, is induced in through advanced technology and the person's own mental abilities. He is capable of neurologically extending himself wherever he wants, nearby, to the edge of the physical universe, or even beyond. 7. Hence, the physics group has been able to open the doors of perception to explore nature and the universe in a manner that has never been possible before, or even been perceived as a possibility. By expanding on the research of scientists such as Albert Einstein and David Bohm, 8, they have been able to accomplish getting astonishing results from this technique. 
It has not been an easy task to get to the point where they have been able to decode and decipher their ENS number experiences into a comprehensible and emergent picture. Now they have managed to do just that, and it has turned into something they call the working model. For them, it has been a roller coaster ride of failure and success, lots of hard work, but for us, now presented with the working model, it is like an exciting journey through the multiverse, or the Unum, as they call it. When I was introduced to it, it certainly blew my mind, and I am confident it will yours, too. I wouldn't have been too thrilled if this technique was merely dependent upon technology and machines to work, because a machine is designed to do a certain task, and that's what it does. It doesn't do anything outside of what it is designed to do, is thus limited in its application and can even be misleading. However, in this case, technology is only used to get the process started, it's the human being who does the job. It's nothing less but fascinating, as we shall see. First comment that comes to mind regarding ENS number is that if a human being extends him herself and starts experiencing things, it's a very subjective experience and not necessarily reliable. Because like Dr. Borden of LPGC number said, much of what they see or perceive on their journey in the multiverse is hard to decode with the human mind. We are not yet set up to do that. This is why they have more than one neurosensor. When all neurosensors have gone on the same expedition, they write down their experiences without telling the others, and then they compare notes afterwards. Apparently, most of the time, their experiences match quite well, and sometimes not. But this is how their research moves forward, and eventually they can build some structure to it. I would imagine they must be aware of the following, but still, after have used different people to explore, it's not 100% reliable, even if they all decode things similarly. They decode it as the human mind would decode something it doesn't totally comprehend, and that could be similar for all of the human species, and still not be accurate. Also, after a while, the neurosensors start knowing each other and each other's interpretations, and this too colors the result, especially as the science group itself consists of a small clique of members. In spite of this, and again, I can hardly even call myself a layman in the field, I believe that at least the majority of the working model is working. Dr. Borden has also told me that this model has been confirmed by some alien species, while others have shown interest in learning more from us. Dr. Borden is excited about that, because it shows, as he says, that we humans actually have something to contribute with to the cosmic community and not just the other way around. If so, I agree, and we should be excited, albeit we have more we contribute with to the cosmic society than even LPGC number is aware of, as we shall see much later on, in another paper. It's called the Living Library. Also, it's my understanding that ENS and some of the principles of the working model were presented by ETS. As I said in the introduction to the science papers, science and religion need to merge. LPGC number is very aware of this, and that is exactly what they are doing with the working model. This is science which is not only including the existence of a higher consciousness into the equation, but is basing it upon its existence. This is the reason I got so interested in their work initially, but once I had dug into their material, I found that there was so much more to it, and I still have so much to learn about it, even on a layman's level. I wouldn't even bother to write this paper if LPGC number didn't include God, or Source, or all that is, or the Prime Creator, many names for the same thing, in their equations. For the first time in eons, a group of alternative, brilliant rogue scientists have been willing to look at science as a combination of matter and spirit, realizing that they are one and the same. It should be mentioned as well that there are a few more alternative science groups out there who are doing a good job decoding reality, but I have decided to focus on our Californian group this time. Just recently, rogue scientist Stephen J. Smith was most likely murdered due to what he was involved in. He was sporadically in contact with me close to his death up to a few years back from that, and he knew he was in danger. He actually told me that http colon slash slash battle of earth dot wordpress dot com slash two zero one zero slash one one slash one four slash rogue dash scientist dash Stephen dash J dash Smith dash murdered slash. So not everybody in high places, being it in the mainstream science community or the government, is thrilled over the new paradigms these alternative scientists come up with. The Unum multiverse is ever-changing. In a fluid multiverse, where everything is in motion and nothing forever remains solid, what is true today may not be true tomorrow. 2. The Idiomaterial Multiverse I have here done my best to simplify LPGC working model so that people hopefully can understand it. I know the result is not perfect, because when we are dealing with new concepts, we sometimes lack words, and it's hard to know how to express them in writing. It's all explained in great details on their website, http colon slash slash lifephysicsgroup.org, but its scientific language is impossible to understand for the layman, even highly educated people in other fields of learning can't understand it, even those with doctor's degrees. However, Kurt Strzyzewski, B.A., at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, 9, did a great job narrowing down all the science behind the working model to just a short essay making it quite comprehensible for common man, but it's still fairly complex. I am mainly going to use Strzyzewski's summary as a base for my own science papers, and do my best to simplify the language even more. The reader may judge whether I succeed or not, so here we go. 
LBGC uses the word Unum for multiverse, and who knows, this may be the term we will use for the multiverse in general in the future. All of creation is ideomaterial, non-physical and physical thought matter, life is organized by overfunctions, and the universe is one of seven superdomains. 10. The above quote by Dr. A.R. Borden of LPGC is describing the working model in just one sentence. If the reader afterwards wants to study up on the original essays, which is my advice, read the endnotes for references in the following subsections. But I strongly advise you to first read this peeled off version for better comprehension, because otherwise, this is a highly scientific subject and very complex. The working model is telling us that the Unum is a natural, living system in itself and contains what we call a known four-dimensional universe, length, width, height, depth and time, but is so much more than that. When a neurosensor is out of his her body, exploring, they can expand beyond the physical universe and experience what is there without interfering with what is going on. Beyond the physical realms are six other domains, which can be classified as the realms of ultimate causation, consisting of vacuum and plenum, 11, quantum and subquantum, 12, 13. In the working model these seven domains are altogether called the seven super domains, not to be confused with the seven super universes in text such as the Urantial Papers 14. The dominating characteristics of the super domains is form giving, and thus the term ideomaterial universe was born, and thus being mind body, we are ideomaterial ourselves, thought creates matter, and there is no way to tell matter and thought apart. Ideomaterial life physics not only has as its goal to describe the fundamentals of life through science, but is also a guide for any body-mind spirits encoded to do so, to explore the purpose of the multiverse, experience its endless potentials and come to the realization that we all are connected. This goes for all body-mind spirit complexes, who are capable of accessing information containing such thought form. This thought form, we as biokind, biological entities and biomind, biological entities, including mind-spirit are accessed through something which in life physics is called the T-boundary, short for thought boundary. This is a super domain of its own, providing us with the purpose to accomplish the above. I should add that not all life forms in the Unum is physical in nature. There are those who don't have bodies, or can create them as they go along, by accessing different dimensions, and these entities are of course also a part of the above encoding. Now, let us start with explaining what happens when a baby is born here on Earth. One of the first things which occurs is that we experience sensory input into the cortical brain and its comprehension of the Earth model becomes natural. This setup model makes it possible for us to differentiate between different 4-space-slash-time places and objects, and we can more easily over a short span of time more easily grasp our Earth reality. The ability to grasp our reality is based on our ability to process thoughts, which are manifested in the hologram experience as Earth reality, to which we now claim ownership and observership. Perhaps we can compare it with plugging into a new computer and start it for the first time. Once it's booted up, files need to be indexed and installed, and browsers, necessary software need to be installed as well, and certain downloads have to be done before we enter the computer world. However, once this is done, we're hooked up with everybody else who have a computer in the global network we call the Internet, Earth in our metaphor. However, if we still use the above metaphor, someone who has not been indexed here on Earth will have different software and programs installed on thought and holographic levels, which do not correspond exactly with Earth index, and the thinking process may not be the same as if he was indexed here on this planet. Therefore, reality in the multiverse is highly subjective and always subject to change. 3. Seven Levels of Manifestation LOMs. Before we take the grand tour through the Unum multiverse, I will let Kurt Strzyzewski start us off. In 2001 the exploration of the Unum began at LPG through the use of extension neurosensing ENS technology. This technology allows for a human biomind to gather data and information and store it into the enteric brain, 15, where it can then be properly decoded and deciphered into sensorially intelligible information. A team of seven extension neurosensors led by Dr. A. R. Borden began the arduous task of detecting, decoding and deciphering information into a comprehensible and emergent picture, the working model. It was realized early on that the human being's living matrix made it an ideal candidate for tuning in and directly accessing any aspect of a targeted natural process within the construct of the Unum. This detection process in which information in the memory of the Unum was directly accessed proved to be much easier than the laborious task of translating all access data and information into an accurate working model. It therefore became necessary to not only blindly gather information but to use intellectual, critical and analytical reasoning to assign meaning to all gathered information. 16. The multiverse, says Strzyzewski, is in itself intelligent, seamless and completely connected on a subquantum level, something that's been taught in metaphysics for a long time. However, to more easily catalog and conceptualize the Unum, LPGC has developed the mathematical and not of communication mind-to-mind -mind concept of levels of manifestation, LOM, which works in a downward order, from implication at its top to explication further down. This turns nature into a seemingly endless range, where all LOMs coexist and interact on every level to form the whole. The LOM can be illustrated in a very simplistic form like here below. Figure 2, the seven levels of manifestation, LOMs, click on image for clearer picture. 
to explain this in a simple, not too scientific, way is not easy, but in my opinion highly necessary. This may soon be the accepted way of looking at the multiverse, so we need to get familiar with it on one level or another. 17. Although Einstein's theory of relativity became the way of looking at things throughout the 20th century and taught in school, it doesn't mean we learn how it works on its highest scientific level, including all the abstract math involved, but in a way most of us could understand. Those who want to continue study physics will sooner or later run into this complex mathematical world, but that is by choice. The rest of us only understand the basics. In its simplest sense, it is a ratio of time-space, which is specifiable, within which idiom material, spirit material, manifestations of all possibilities take place. We are talking about manifestations as small as the tiniest cell, or atom, to that of the entire multiverse. Everything is intelligence and infinite potential. Interestingly enough, when a neurosensor enters any given LOM outside for space-time, see figure 2, things gets pretty challenging. Each LOM shows to hold all outcome probabilities possible in all levels of manifestation, and we're talking forming literal histories. Each LOM's time-space ratio contains timelines which include the five infinites. Past time-like. Future time-like. Space-like. Past null. Future null infinities. Continuous research indicated that it was imperative to learn more about the boundaries of all the seven LOMs to understand the common superfunctions of the UNUM, something the working model refers to as superdomains. 4. The seven superdomains. The UNUM consists of seven superdomains in total, formed from within the T boundary, thought boundary, which is the term for thought implication on top, moving downward through the LOMs number in superdomains to manifest an explication in form and matter. The T boundary can be depicted as a fuzzy shield around the egg-shaped UNUM. Each of the superdomains has its own ratio of space and time, and now we have to stretch our imagination. The various superdomains have different ratios depending on when and where you are located. In reality, each of the seven domains are completely interconnected, but at the same time work as unique superdomains in and of themselves. This, in an attempt to explain this in simpler terms, can be compared to us humans, who are also connected with each other and everything else in the multiverse, but depending on where and when we are, we experience ourselves as separate beings at the same time as we are one. Figure 3 Organization of the UNUM superdomains as an ovoid shaped metastructure presented here as a two dimensional image of a superdomain eight dimensional continuum. The UNUM, as depicted in Figure 3, has an ovoid, egg like shape with an onion like, layered metastructure with fuzzy boundaries, separating the domains. The entire UNUM is a limitless plenum, the combination of space, including matter of energetics organized as a supercontinuum. Thought, as energy and infinite potential, can via emotion, which is a form of energy as well, and intention work itself in interconnectivity and, in singularity or in unison respectively, manifest in matter. The denser the energy, the more work to make it manifest. On certain levels, you create what you want with your thoughts, emotions and intentions only, while in our dense reality here on Earth, we often need to take additional steps to make things manifest in the physical. To understand how the UNUM works, we need to take a tour into each of the seven superdomains, one by one, to see what is there and what is its function. This has been done via ENS, and with help from certain extraterrestrial beings, and the following are the conclusions made by the scientists involved. These experiences more often than not show to be very coherent with each other's, and if six to seven people perceive and experience the same, or similar things, the evidence after a while will be considered quite solid. 4.1 The Prime Causal Superdomain This superdomain is the outer shell of the UNUM, Fig. 3, and its function is the creation of thought, with two other additional functions. Manifestation of thought matrices. Transform downward causal chain. Thought boundary, T boundary, information is thus sent through a downward cascading effect, which is applied equally in the next five lower superdomains in the following order, each of them will be looked into separately in sequence as well. Thought B. Unisonic C. Logomorphic D. Syntonic diffusive E. Templaic F. Figure 4 below is showing what a thought matrix would look like at its inception point and the result in thought essence it is producing at the time. The effect is instantaneous, and will be explained in more details in the next two subsections. Figure 4a, b, and c, thought matrix at inception point and its result in the two next superdomains below, click on image to enlarge. 4.2 thought superdomain. The prime causal and the thought superdomains work in unison to creative impulses which become thought essences and thought matrices simultaneously, in parallel. The two primary functions of the thought superdomain are Take an accurate photo of the thought. Record sound associated with the thought. This superdomain also has as its function to invest in creative impulses originated at the prime causal or four dash space slash time superdomains. This creative impulse investment has the quality of making a distinguishable and coherent whole so that it can be understandable as a concept. In simpler words, this means that a thought is sent down to the four dash space slash time, for example, being processed there and sent back up to be processed. Once an accurate photo is taken of the original thought, the second primary function kicks in automatically. 
then the thought is instantly moved forth to the logomorphic, morphic meaning, form, or shape, and syntonic diffusive. Syntonic equals adjusted to the same, or a particular frequency, superdomains, 18. Figure 4b above illustrates how the enfoldment field of the thought domain appears as a plain surface with no major characteristics other than the marking of the thought essence. It can be seen as a line through the prime causal and thought superdomains. In general, this process can be likened to a computer hard drive, recording a file onto a disk. So, in summary, as we can see, not only do the superdomains work themselves in a downward fashion, but the thought, as it's being processed through the domains, are then manifesting in its lowest superdomain, forward dash space slash time, and is sent back up the domains again after have been processed, manifested and acted upon. Hence, one single thought eventually becomes experience, and this experience is being part of, shared, and accessible to any entity evolved enough to receive the information in any of the seven superdomains, not only, forward dash space slash time. Metaphysically speaking here, if I may, it means one has to be on the same frequency or above to be able to receive and interpret the thought. Another important role of this superdomain is to function as the ultimate backup domain. Any thought that has ever been thought, and every action that has even been taken, is stored here, like in a supergiant Akashic record. Here is the story of the Unum, preserved forever, way after a four-dimensional universe dies, and anyone living in the Unum, or potentially elsewhere, has access to this ultimate library if they are evolved enough. We are using it on a daily basis without knowing about it, but as we evolve, we can more consciously access it and visit it. 19. Then, in a downward fashion, each planetary body has its own Akashic records, which includes any and every thought and action made within that planetary body. More about that later. 4.3 Unisonic Superdomain this superdomain is apparently the one that has been the hardest to decipher by the neurosensors. Its main function is to bring the information on the disk, the thought sound signature complex, and propel it forward or downward on its way to becoming a four space slash time object or form, making the refinements required, almost like adjusting the quality of the contents of the disk before bringing it forward to the next step in the process of getting the final product. In figure 4c above, we are shown how the new arriving thought essences are joined together, red, in a handshake-like effect that interconnects with all other sound walls in the superdomain. Interestingly enough, as a side note, already as a young adolescent, I intuitively knew that the universe was music in its purest form, and that it was held together by frequency. When I looked at pictures of the universe and the giant galaxies, the stars, and the planets, I could hear in my head that each heavenly body was playing its own instruments, have its own sound and contributed to a larger symphony, which was that which was played by the whole galaxy. Other galaxies play other symphonies and I could imagine how the whole universe was one big super symphony where everything is playing its part on God's complex, but yet so simple, musical sheet. Although there is much more to it than that, the feeling I got from experiencing this phenomenon just by looking at high-resolution pictures was almost overwhelming. I also realized that music is universal, and those of us who are able to create our own music, like I have done, are basically downloading bits and pieces from the Galactic Symphony, creating something unique and personal from it with the purpose of having an emotional experience impact on self and other selves, and then add this minor composition to the already existing giant overall symphony of the Milky Way and the universe has infinite potential and thus change the super symphony with a few notes, or rather, add to it. How successful we are depends on how much in tune we are with the multiverse. Thus, we can compare classical composers like Mozart, Beethoven, Bach, etc., with the death metal and low frequency music composer. Who is most in tune with the harmonic multiverse? Who of the two is more in tune with God's source? I also realize that each one of us is playing his her own melody constantly, but mostly unconsciously, by just being a body mind spirit complex, bio mind. If we are able to perceive this, we can recognize each other merely from the unique song we are constantly playing for our environment. This song is ever changing as our frequencies change, it's even changing from day to day, hour to hour, minute to minute, each one of us is not only one frequency, but we exist in harmonics of different frequencies. The more balanced we are, and the more evolved, the more beautiful the harmonics we emit are perceived by the multiverse around us, and we are perceived as more pleasant by people in our environment. Consequently, the more in harmony and in balance the inhabitants of a certain galaxy are as a whole, the more harmonic and pleasant is the overall symphony of the galaxy. So potentially, by becoming more aware of being multidimensional and being able to consciously experience that we exist in many places in space-time and time-space simultaneously, we can also feel out a certain galaxy before entering it. How harmonic and pleasant is the symphony played by that certain galaxy? Not so pleasant? Well, if I enter, I'd be more alert than if the symphony is perceived as more pleasant to our sensors. Same thing would go for feeling out a particular planet. This kind of thinking, of course, is limited to one perception only, sound frequency, when the multiverse can, and should be, perceived multi-perceptional, but the thought in itself is fascinating and mind-boggling. 4.4 Logomorphic and Syntonic Diffusive Superdomains the logomorphic superdomain has as its function to install rules of operation and rules of manifestation when comes to thought to prepare for entering 4-space slash time. 
the syntonic diffusive superdomain is actively assisting in the creative impulses from the T-boundary of the former superdomain in the same downward fashion as described earlier. Its primary task is maintenance of functionality to keep the thoughts stable on their way down the superdomains. It has an indexing function, which can be compared with registering property with the Library of Congress or similar. But the syntonic diffusive superdomain also has another different function, which can be likened with branding livestock, perhaps. It established a homing function to know where it came from and where it needed to return to once its function S were fulfilled at its intended destination, 20. Figure 5, a false color facsimile of a neurosensor's holonomic experience in the syntonic diffusive superdomain, click on the image for enlargement. As we can see in figure 5, the further down the superdomains the thoughts move, the more they manifest as shape and form. Intelligent artificial structure is now visible to the neurosensor. Also visible are the downward causal transforms which have already been conformed to a template specification. 4.5 Template Quantum Potential Superdomain Much of life physics lies in phenomena between 4-space slash time and the template superdomain, or what is now referred to as the subquantum or the vacuum. Here is where all creative impulses take form before they enter 4-space slash time, where we perceive ourselves to be. All quanta, in whatever role or conformational function they may be, know all 4-space slash time rules and have access to all 4-space slash time points. Figure 6 human form visible in the template quantum potential superdomain. The existence of 4-space-slash-time rules are predicated on the existence of its mere template and quanta support ranges in the template superdomain. 4.6 4-space-slash-time superdomain. Figure 7, satellite image of a galaxy, a massive, gravitationally bound system that consists of stars and stellar remnants, an interstellar medium of gas and dust, and an important but poorly understood component tentatively dug dark matter. 21. This last superdomain is the innermost of them all in the unum, as we can see in figures 2 and 3. The first six superdomains have as one of their common functions to project, foster, promote, and support the lowest of the superdomains. It is here where all creative impulses, originating in the prime causal domain, move through an instantaneous process to become a template conformation, and ultimately an object or a thing. We often refer to these objects as matter, which in certain terms is a bit misleading, as matter in itself does not truly exist, and in reality matter is just a range of energetic frequencies which our senses interpret as being more or less solid. There are numbers of natural phenomena manifesting in 4-space-slash-time, including astronomical, astrophysical, and cosmological. Astronomy is concerned about celestial bodies, such as galaxies, stars, planets, comets, nebulae and so on, while astrophysics is dealing with the physics of the universe, like luminosity, temperature, density and chemical composition of celestial objects. Cosmology is more directed toward the study of the universe as a whole as it is now, including humanity's role in it. These three areas form the natural basis for 4-space-slash-time as one superdomain of the unum. Important to realize is that objects in 4-space-slash-time are actually macroquantum objects, and therefore available to the biomind by their quantum numbers 22. This plays an important role for the biomind. In fact, any biomind has access to any object's quantum number as it exists in the thought superdomain as an upward chain from causality from here to source or t-boundary. Hence, you basically know everything about everything instantly. 5. The T-Boundary The T-Boundary, or Thaw Boundary, is the boundless region which is the source of simultaneous manifestation of all superdomains within the Unum. To an outside observer, the T-Boundary would appear as an extremely bright point, much like the opposite end of a black hole, but without the rotating, familiar world that goes with it, when viewed from inside the prime causal superdomain, Figure 8. Figure 8, holonomic-like representation of a neurosensor's experience of the T-Boundary head-on from inside the prime causal superdomain. It's the T-boundary that allows manifestation and demanifestation to flourish. There is no primary function of the T-boundary beside its instinct alone, which makes it uniquely important for the creation and manifestation of the Unum. 6. Regions of the Unum Located inside this enormous thought superdomain is the condensate region, which is separated from the thought substance region by a unisonic harmonic zone, not semi-transparent but rather contains a diverse and rich assortment of colors and rings. These logomorphic rings are the result of a toroidal field, a surface generated by rotating a closed plane curve about a coplanar in the same plane line that does not intersect the curve that encompasses our universe, the quantum vacuum and space-time. Figure 9, logomorphic rings produced by toroidal field located inside the condensate region of the unum. The condensate and thought substance regions are very important in the development of the formation of life. Life as physical information starts as thought substance information in the thought substance region of the unum. The conformation of life, which tells us how life information begins and ultimately gets matches into a biological life form in space-time, is realized in the condensate region of the unum. The subquantum vacuum PLENUM plays a very important role in the latter, as we shall see. Figure 10, two-dimensional representation of the two primary regions of the unum almost gives the impression of a gigantic, consciously aware spaceship on a journey through the void. 
7. Subquantum Vacuum Plenum Looking at figure 10, we can see that beyond the major regions of the unum lies something which life physics calls the void. This is the ultimate vacuum, the subquantum which are the fundamental building blocks that defines not only space and time, but also conforms life information that exists in space-time, making this vacuum a remarkable medium with the following characteristics. It has access to all physical matter, including all living things. It displays the properties of a superfluid medium. It doesn't offer resistance to a physical object or structure. It generates displacements and dual transformations, such as simultaneously generate electric into magnetic fields, and vice versa. It does not have a density in the same way a physical object does. By further studying the above, LPGC started researching the composition of the subquantum vacuum the LENUM, its electromagnetic properties, interactions with matter, and behavior of waves in the medium. It was then realized that it was the subquantum vacuum PLENUM that was the interconnected region, accessing the quantum potential, SYNTONIC diffusive, logomorphic, and unisonic intersuperdomain sets. Figure 11, vacuum PLENUM in dark matter medium manifesting in space-time. In astronomy it's suggested that most of the mass in the universe is dark matter, and it has been a mystery to scientists over the years, most of the energy in the universe is even in a more mysterious form, called dark energy, Fig. 11. Further investigation showed that there is an interconnection of all, 4-space-slash-time energy, as quata and elementary particles with the subquantum vacuum PLENUM, the void, through a process of cooperative sustainability. In simpler terms, everything is interconnected on a subquantum level, which ultimately makes everything in existence one, there is no separation. This ONENS is all that is the ultimate definition of God, and so it has proven to be in the working model. 8. The overfunction in the Akashic Records, 23. The term overfunction used in life physics can perhaps be compared to what in metaphysics is called the oversoul. According to the physics group, there are 12,960,000 degrees of infinites in interconnectivity between the thought superdomain and four space slash time. It's a mind boggling concept, which to some extent can be illustrated in the diagram below. Figure 12, the 12,960,000 infinite interconnectivity degrees and negative and positive space click to enlarge. Like we mentioned above, the T-boundary is a respiratory of the biokine's memories, biokine being the term for biological entities like ourselves. It's the ultimate Akasha record, if you will. It records all our memories, experiences, knowledge and technologies, actually every single thought we've ever had. And it's stored for eternity. One can say that the biokind as a bio-mind, the mind spirit of the biokind, becomes the sum total of its membership as one metastructure of minds sharing the same software and the same operator. Further research showed that all complex oscillating biological entities, COPs, are eligible to access information contained within the biokind repository of information. In other words, if a COBE number is advanced enough, they could develop their own overfunction over soul by taking advantage of this inherited property as a prerequisite for further evolution and evolvement. This means that the biominds of a certain biokind, through levels of self-realization, are putting the puzzle pieces of life together. They start understanding the fact that they are not one of a kind, but we are all one. Firstly, all members of a certain biokind are one, both in biokind and biomind, and secondly, they are one with everything in the unum on a subquantum level. Thirdly, by realizing the first two, the conclusion can only be that God is in everything, and everything is in God, and thus, each of us is God. This leads us to the very metafunction of the T-boundary, Straczynski says. The T-boundary's wish is for COBESs sick to know and realize that the purpose of what at this stage of human development we refer to as science is to detect, decode, and decipher the cumulus available as the working model which, by the way, is also indicated to be available to all COBE life forms capable of interfacing with thought forms containing such information. Therefore, the overfunction itself becomes the human for the idiomaterial biomind, allowing for the biomind to experience itself in the unum and at the same time, become the unum, emphasis not an original. 24. 9. The Big Bang Theory Revisited The theory in mainstream science is still that the universe was created through a Big Bang and has been expanding ever since. It's also been postulated that before this universe was created through the Big Bang, nothing existed. This has been re-evaluated by LPGC. The neurosensors have found out, much to their astonishment, from using ENS and from having had contact with ETS in near space, that the universe, 4-space-slash-time we are currently experiencing is the fourth or fifth of its kind. Our universe is on its fourth or fifth cycle. 25. It is known that the previous universe was destroyed or imploded due to that we misused dark energy to such a degree that the light of the galaxies in the old universe literally went out. 25a. They became dead galaxies and were thus depleted from life forms. Therefore, it was destroyed and this new universe was created around 13.7 billion years ago and is teeming with life. Hopefully we have learned our lessons from last time and will not repeat the same mistake in this universe. On the other hand, if we do, it's obvious that life starts all over again. Mind you, that it is only 4-space-slash-time that recycles. The other super domains seem to stay intact. At least this is my understanding. 
Also, there are also other universes, 4 dash space slash times, besides our own, existing in parallel with this one, and they are all in different stages of development. A succeeding universe, in my comprehension, which has learned what it was set up to experience, will return to Source God as a mission completed and a new universe will be created, built on the experience from the previous. In a sense, this could very well be the base for the reasoning by the Ra Collective, 26, channeled in the early 1980s by Carla Rueckert, more about this in the metaphysics papers, where these entities were talking about descending in octaves. There is, however, nothing in life physics which indicates that anything cycles in octaves, but there is still a lapse in acceptance between science and metaphysics. Metaphysical entities are often more than willing to merge the two, but science has always been much more reluctant. I hope that will change in the near future. Until recently, most humans on planet Earth have only known of species native to this planet. The question whether X exists or not has never really left the discussion table, and the real knowledge and the evidence of the existence of extraterrestrial beings has been suppressed and intentionally kept on a level of pure speculation, when the evidence of their existence is overwhelming. Not only do they exist in abundance throughout the multiverse, in many different shapes and forms, but some of them are already here on Earth, walking among us, and we don't even notice. Let's take a look at this subject in the next chapter. Figure 13 the shape and form of the 4-space-slash-time universe source, LPGC.